Hey, what's up and how's it going? My name is Toby and over the past couple of weeks I've been developing a concept for an AR real-time strategy game. Today I'd like to present a prototype to you guys and explain how I created it. However, I'll also discuss why the initial concept won't work as expected. But despite this, there is still a cool solution to creating an exciting real-life strategy game, which I'll elaborate on at the end of this video. So the general idea behind this AR concept was that you would just be able to walk around and find a spot that you like, just scan it and begin placing your buildings on there, creating a new settlement or some kind of new base. And so the special thing would be that you could seamlessly switch between the 3D scanned mesh and the actual AR environment. So you could begin creating your base while you're in the train or while you're somewhere else and then just could walk back to that location and just look at it in AR how it's actually at this position. And then of course you could gather resources depending on the actual real world position that you are. Maybe there would be some trees next to it or there could be some water next to it and you could begin fishing. And so you could just expand and create your base, then create some defenses and begin expanding it by just scanning the location further or going to another location and scanning that so that you could make the whole world with all of its actual locations a gigantic strategy game. So for those of you following this channel thoroughly, you already know that I'm using Unity and the free AR plugin Lightship. And this is a pretty good combination because it offers some very unique features. For example, this so-called VPS virtual positioning system on which I've been doing a quite extensive tutorial, which allows you to basically scan 3D locations and then correlate them with their actual GPS positions, which would be one essential component for the strategy game. So one of the first systems I wanted to build was the placement and movement system where I could just have some kind of UI bar on the bottom and then click on one of those icons and then just place an object and then move, rotate or scale it. And so that could be just the base functionality for building anything in the strategy game. So the placement bar heavily relies on scriptable objects because they make it very easy to switch between different types of scripts and just access the same data and manipulate it as well in between even different scenes. And so this placement object SO, it holds the name of the object, a texture, which is going to the UI bar and the transformable object, which is a class that I created, which simply allows you to move, rotate or scale the according uh, object and will sit on any kind of object that is being placed. So the way that the gizmos work is they are actual 3D objects and they hold this gizmo object component and I've been selecting and assigning those an axis. So for example, when the player taps on the screen and hits the Y axis or the Y gizmo, then this will be recognized and then let's say they just move the fingers somewhat to the left or to the right, then this delta is being calculated and being fed into the transformable object. So then each of the UI items at the bottom has a related transformable object and a placement object as O. And once it's being tapped, an event is being invoked with the corresponding object. Then there is the placement bar logic, which is a instance, so a singleton. And this one will just hold the currently selected object and so globally sets whether there's currently some object selected. So if we want to place something or not, which means that we might want to move something around. And then I took the AR placement plane mesh script, which we created in one of the previous tutorials, where we learned how to place objects on AR mesh. And instead of just placing a predetermined object, I chose the uh, one from the placement bar logic singleton instance. So if there's a selected object, then spawn it at the tap position. If not, then don't do anything because then we might just want to manipulate an object or we might just want to do something completely different. 
So the resource system is quite similar to the placement system, meaning that it also heavily relies on scriptable objects and instances, so the singletons. Um, so this, for example, is the resource manager, which will add and remove resources. And so these methods can be called on the uh, instance. And it relies on the resource scriptable object, which again has a UI image, a type and an amount. And the type is defined by a enum, which will hold all the different resource types like wood, iron, stone, etc. So the resource object cost manager is responsible for holding all the information of how much each object costs. This is what you see up there with the list of the resource cost placement object SO, which are scriptable objects. So for example, a house costs 50 wood and 30 iron or so, let's say. And any time an object is being placed or spawned, it will go through this list and then will remove the corresponding resources from the uh, resource manager. And so for the correlation between each uh, placement object and the resources that uh, it costs, I created another scriptable object, which will then hold each resource type with each correlating amount so they can easily be tracked and removed from the resource manager. So the virtual positioning system is a combination of photogrammetry, which creates 3D objects out of photos, as well as a GPS slash maps system, which both combines a specific 3D object being at the specific location and can be used uh, with the Wayfarer app provided by uh, Niantic. So it's a separate app. And I've created two different scenes, one being the main 3D scene that uses just a normal mesh that has been downloaded and the other one being the VPS scene that would then detect this position and this mesh in the real world at the actual location. And so as I was able to place down objects in both scenes separately, the only thing left now to do was to create some kind of connection. So to save the placed objects in one scene and then once you've switched to another scene, load them again. So creating the switch in between the AR and the 3D scene was actually quite manageable. I created a class for data persistence, which would simply save the object type, the position and the rotation, and also the object data list that would save a list of all these uh, objects. And then I created a few helper classes that would simply either save or load all this object data into the persistent file path so that we could uh, store all the relevant information to load the object in between different scenes. So after that, the only thing that I needed to do is to get the parent of all the instantiated objects and filter out all the information. And with this information, I could just find the corresponding placeable object and its position and rotation, and so properly instantiate all the objects in the next scene. So let's talk about the challenges and why this concept doesn't work in reality as I intend it to be. And this is because the process of scanning and transforming the images into a mesh with this geo uh, position is actually only working with the separate app, which is the Wayfarer app. And there's no way currently, as the, at least as I know it, to actually integrate this 3D scanning um, for a VPS into a self-made application and then also retrieving the actual 3D mesh uh, into the app. So this is quite sadly not working, but there are also some other reasons. One, for example, is the scan quality. And the problem is that if you only scan a location once by yourself, then the lighting will actually have a huge impact on whether you can actually uh, locate this VPS. So for example, if you then again scan it in another lighting condition, then, well, it might not recognize this uh, VPS. Also, sometimes the scans do not have the best quality so the texture also doesn't look that great on it and just the 3d view isn't so ideal 
And lastly also performance is a concern because if you would start to build a very big city and combine that with AR which is very resource intense anyways so there would be thermal throttling and the performance would go down I had already had some issues while testing so this is also not such a great option and that means for the time being we need to just find another way of making this work but luckily there are also some other options. So one option would be to use the Lightship map system which would allow us to create a new settlement on the actual map and would also allow us to use just a natural location attribute such as if there is a forest or if there is water to make it possible to harvest resources and all of that and would still have this kind of connection to reality which I think is something really nice. It wouldn't be on the actual real life geometry in a sense of a fully 3D scanned world, but it would still be a very interesting way to play a strategy game in your city or wherever you are located. Another option would be the geospatial API from Google Maps, which is also quite interesting and where you would have an already 3D scanned mesh of basically the whole world and that with textures and also looking quite nice and also all players would have pretty much the same mesh. So this is pretty interesting. This would mean though that, well, you could only build outdoors, but also would be a very interesting option. So coming to an end for this video, I'm really interested in your opinion. Do you think this approach would be a fun strategy game? What would be your approach for an RTS strategy game in augmented reality? Or would you say that this kind of genre doesn't fit with AR at all? So please let me know your ideas and opinions in the comments. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.